Here is a slice of kidney showing features of renal papillary necrosis. And this is coagulative necrosis of portions of the renal medulla. It usually involves the papillary tip of the medulla and in 70% of cases it affects both kidneys. Renal papillary necrosis usually occurs in adults over the age of 60, although it can occur in babies that are usually less than one month old. In order to understand why the renal papillae are particularly susceptible to necrosis, it's worth just having a think about the anatomy. The blood supply to the renal medullary papillae is via the vasa recta. And the furthest the blood has to flow is, of course, the end of the papillae. In fact, only 10% of the blood supply to the kidney actually reaches the inner portion of the medulla and papillae. And this explains why the papillae are particularly vulnerable if the blood supply is compromised. Symptoms of renal papillary necrosis include renal failure, fever, chills, back pain, hematuria and pieces of tissue derived from the papillae that have become necrotic may pass in the urine. The most common and serious cause of renal papillary necrosis is diabetes mellitus and here is a diabetic kidney showing features of renal papillary necrosis. Another important and common cause is acute pyelonephritis. Analgesics, including non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, are also known to cause renal papillary necrosis. The mechanism here being vasoconstriction. In sickle cell disease, sickled cells may cause obstruction, resulting in renal papillary necrosis. Finally, hypoxia and dehydration are two other important causes of renal papillary necrosis. Grossly, the papillae have a yellow or grey appearance not sharply defined from the adjacent kidney. Microscopically, the affected papillae show coagulative necrosis, are structureless with ghosts of tubules remaining with nuclear debris. This is a section of kidney from a patient with analgesic nephropathy, and you can see the structureless papilla we are zooming into. This is another example of renal papillary necrosis and you can see how sharply defined the necrotic papilla is from the viable kidney. And here is a slice of kidney showing the typical appearances of renal papillary necrosis with the yellow grey areas sharply defined from the adjacent medulla. The prognosis depends on the cause and extent of the damage to the kidneys, with diabetes being associated with a particularly poor prognosis. 